This hearing of the Senate Judiciary Committee will come to order. Today, the committee will hear from witnesses about the alarming level of youth e-cigarette use and examine how federal agencies have failed to enforce the law designed to protect our children from a lifetime of nicotine addiction. Let's turn to a video that shines light on just how addictive these e-cigarettes are to children and why today's hearing is so timely. You hid your vape underneath your pillows, yeah. and you would come and smoke how often? Oh, I couldn't go longer than like 10, 15 minutes without hitting it. It was so addicting. The Surgeon General's warning first appeared on cigarette packages back in 1970. More than four decades later, the nation's top doctor is sounding the alarm on e-cigarettes, especially when used by teenagers. E-cigarettes went from being rare in 2010 to now being the most common tobacco product used by our nation's youth. This represents a staggering development in a relatively short period of time. And it also threatens 50 years of hard-fought progress that we have made curbing tobacco use. And it places a whole new generation at risk for addiction to nicotine. It took two days for my lungs to fail and I almost died. I asked for like a pen and paper because that was the only way I could communicate. And I wrote, I want to start an vaping campaign. That was the first thing I did when I opened my eyes. And the fact that they market this crap to children and they turn into pink, pretty purple packaging candy pisses me off. I had a really bad headache. I just felt really sick. It's really hard to believe that that happened, but everyone's told me that one day they just said he has a 10% chance to live. Like I have to take over 20 medications a day, opportunities that I would have had before, like going in the military. I can't do that anymore. There's a lot we don't know about the both short-term and long-term consequences of vaping. And so I would just say, don't. That tells us that we're not doing a good enough job at protecting kids. Cigarettes are responsible for more than 480,000 deaths per year. These deaths touch virtually every family in this country, including my own. This hearing is part of my continued effort in Congress to stop these needless deaths, particularly the addiction of children. We have made progress and the tobacco giants have fought back. That's why we're here today. In the year 2000, 28% of high school students smoked cigarettes. Thanks to the efforts of Congress and the public health community, that number has declined to only 2%, from 28% to 2% of high school students today. But anyone who thought big tobacco would accept this trend and dissipate like a cloud of smoke was mistaken. Instead, they rebranded and introduced new products known as e-cigarettes. And they follow the same playbook, the exact same playbook they successfully used to drive sales of Marlboro and Camel cigarettes in the earlier years. Target kids. Thanks to the addictive nature of nicotine, these companies knew they've known a long time. If they could just hook a child at a young age, they had a customer for life. It started with Juul. Backed by $13 billion from tobacco giant Altria in a partnership which the American Heart Association has characterized as a match made in tobacco heaven, I would say tobacco hell. The company introduced flashy devices, kid-friendly flavors, and advertisements featuring young, attractive people. That unleashed a wave of nicotine addiction that then FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb described in 2018 as an epidemic, with more than 5 million teens reported that they were using e-cigarettes. The FDA and the Justice Department has the tools to prevent this epidemic. They have failed to use them. The Family Smoking Prevention and Tobacco Control Act requires e-cigarette companies to get FDA authorization before, before bringing products to market. Authorization can only be granted if the companies making the product first prove that their products are, quote, appropriate for the protection of public health, end quote. But for years, under both Democratic and Republican administrations, FDA ignored its responsibility until public health groups actually had to sue the agency to force it to do its job and protect our kids. In that court case, the U.S. District Court in Maryland found that the FDA was in fact violating the Tobacco Control Act 
and ordered the agency to complete its review of e-cigarette applications by September the 9th, 2021. That was 33 months ago, almost three years. FDA still has not completed its review. Almost three years later, still has not completed its review. After the court order deadline passed on September 9th, 2021, FDA could have ordered every single unauthorized e-cigarette off the market. And that's what it should have done. And as the law clearly intends, instead, thousands of unauthorized e-cigarettes flooded the markets. Flavors like Blue Raz Ice, Strawberry Watermelon Bubblegum, and Cotton Candy designed and effectively addicting millions of children in America. Let me be clear. Despite claims from Big Tobacco, there is zero evidence that e-cigarettes and their fruity flavors are targeted at adults. None. No evidence. In fact, the rate of e-cigarette use is nearly twice as high for middle and high for middle school students as it is for adults. Today I'm releasing the findings from an NIH-funded Monitoring the Future study, one of the country's preeminent public health surveys. The researchers there estimate that 2.1 million children have picked up vaping since the Food and Drug Administration missed its September 2021 court-imposed deadline. 2.1 million new children addicted. And that's where the Justice Department is supposed to step in. FDA relies on Department of Justice to bring enforcement actions for violations of the law. Sadly, the Justice Department seems to have followed FDA's lead and has failed to effectively crack down on illegal e-cigarettes. To date, only 23, remember that number, 23 e-cigarette brands have been authorized for sale in the United States. Yet there are more than 6,000 e-cigarette brands on the market today. A trip to any gas station in America, convenience store or vape shop makes the scope of this illegal market clear. I simply do not understand how the Food and Drug Administration and our Department of Justice have permitted thousands, thousands of products to remain on store shelves when their manufacturers have not received authorization or in some cases even filed an application. While these two agencies sit on their hands during both the Trump and Biden administrations, e-cigarette companies addicted a new generation of children to nicotine, erasing the hard work so many of us undertook to convince kids not to smoke tobacco cigarettes and ultimately save their lives. I'd like to thank Ranking Member Graham for working with me on organizing the hearing. Unfortunately, he cannot be with us today, but Senator Tillis from North Carolina will be serving as a ranking member in his place. I now turn to Senator Tillis for opening remarks.